Hey seniors, it's Mr. Baker here. I'm, I am with the other counselors from Oyster River High School and I'm also with Angie Kassengay. Angie joins us from the New Hampshire Higher Education Assistance Foundation, otherwise known as NEEF. And she is with us today to help answer uh, some burning questions you probably have about the state of affairs with your grades, your college application, with, um, with financial, with financial stuff, with deadlines for committing to a school, and and everything. So we want to we want to try to ask her some of those um, those most pressing questions and um, and get her feedback. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and start. I, I have a few questions myself. So um, my first question is that uh, seniors definitely come in asking. Um, about their grades and really concerned about getting the best grades possible uh, for the schools that have admitted them. And obviously we're considering doing a few different things now that we are doing switch to remote learning. So my question to you is, will colleges, what will colleges think about any changes to grading um, that we may, we may enact and uh, some students probably want to know, does, is this an opportunity for them to slack off and to just kind of start senioritis a little bit early? Yep. All right. Well, um, basically, um, the colleges are really well aware of what's going on and that there um, is, you know, nationally changes being made at all different kinds of school districts. I would say first, know that as a school district, you are going to convey whatever the college needs to know to them, right? So if it got changed and your A now represents something else or whatever, you easily can let a college know what this means and, and what it, it, the interpretation of it is. So there's always good communication that way from the school counselors to the colleges. Number two, yeah, of course, this is a time where a senioritis sits in anyway, but we always want to maintain well, you don't sit down and pick the grass, you know, out in the outfield. So you do want to like make sure you're, you're still in the game. Um, and I would say that more importantly for those kids who have some opportunities coming up, like if you have some AP exams and things like that coming up, if you've worked really hard all year and you know you can take that exam and actually get the credit, why not? That is credit that the colleges are still going to count into your freshman year. That can save you time, save you money, whatever. Um, you know, it would be silly to show them I worked really hard all year in an AP class and then didn't take the opportunity to take the exam. So I think those kids are probably faced with the most kind of pending questions right now. If you think you can pass it, um, you know, and your, and your teachers have faith in you, then maybe you should try it and, and, and show them that you did do all that work all year. But yeah, the colleges are really aware of what's going on. They're, they're willing to communicate with your school counselors to find out whatever they need to know. And I, I can say I've received, there's a lot of emails coming in from specific schools saying the same thing. We will do- What do I need to know? You know yep. We will figure it out and whatever every school does, we will, we'll, we'll roll with it. Yeah, I don't know one college that's looking to penalize any child. Like that's Absolutely. just not in their benefit. And I will say as the AP coordinator, I definitely say this is probably the best year to try to take an AP because they are drastically reducing what they expect you to know for the exam. And our Absolutely. AP teachers have been great about sending out that info. Okay. Right now to a lot of students, um, usually this time of year, it's, it's the beginning of April. So they have that one, they have one more month yep. before May 1st, which is the traditional commitment deadline for schools to get the deposit in and to declare what schools they're going to. Um, some schools are moving that, some aren't, some are open, some are checking emails. Uh, every school is doing, every college is doing their own thing. Yep. Um, how can a student best check with the schools that they're interested in to find out what they have, what they've altered, what they haven't, and what they're expecting of admitted students? Yep, so just to kind of back up, yep, May 1st is traditionally um, deposit day, and literally by May 2nd, they are giving out spots that were not claimed. Um, that has drastically changed for this year. We have um, a number of schools who are changing their um, deadline for deposit to June 1st, June 15th. Um, some are even saying way into the summer. Um, so I can imagine it's really hard for our kids to stay on top of that. There is one central location that has been housing all of that information to make it really easy to find. So you can go to NACAC, which is N-A-C-A-C, -A -C, um, the National Association of College Admissions Counselors. They have a page and a link 
um, that will literally show you every college in the country alphabetically and it will tell you what they've changed. But what's also really nice as a resource is besides telling you um, that the admissions date deadline changed, a lot of them are also posting things like, here's how to take a vir virtual tour. Here's an admitted student day panel. Um, so they're also posting their resources to help you make that decision as well. Um, so I highly recommend going out there, checking all of your schools, um, just like you did before. You, took, you checked all their deadline dates and got in, you're organized at the front end. This is getting organized on the back end. Yeah. Angie, um, you mentioned the May 1st, maybe June 1st decision deadline for colleges. Um, a lot of our students take the opportunity to visit some of those schools once they're yeah. accepted. Um, and a lot of times that happens over April break. And obviously that's probably not going to happen this year. Um, can you talk a little bit about what students can do to kind of help support that final decision? It's kind of a big choice to make without having set foot on a campus. Um, I think there there's a lot of nervousness around making such a big decision. Yeah, um, first off, I, I always say to the seniors in general, this is really emotionally laden and I get that. You know, this feels like a really big emotional decision and you're 17, 18 years old and you wanna make the right choice. So number one, be kind to yourself and know that you have the ability to make the choice. You have great people supporting you. Um, and, and, you know, take a deep breath as you're sort of going through this. But some of the things that we're seeing is that some of the colleges are offering virtual tours um, or virtual um, uh, admitted student experiences. So some of them have actually posted the panel that you would have seen at a, um, a admitted student day. They'll sometimes have the students up. Well, now they're doing Zoom meetings like this where students on campus are giving you feedback. Um, so check out those kind of things. The other thing that I recommend, and I recommend this anyway, every year is check out the curriculum in the um, program that you're interested in. Sometimes, you know, people are like, well, they have it a, let's go with my major. It was communications. Communications from school to school to school can be very different. And sometimes it's very analytical and you're reading a lot about speeches. Other classes, you're, write, you're writing speeches. And other times there's a full um, TV studio on campus and sometimes there isn't. So looking at maybe what courses would you be taking, you know, um, things like that might actually be like, wow, this is much more what I'm interested in and want to study than what this is. Even though they have the same name, they might look very different um, over the next four years of what you need to take. So I always recommend that as a helping to maybe flush one up a little bit higher in the, in the um, thing. You can um, check out their websites, of course. Um, you know, if there's an opportunity, talk to the admissions reps. They are not allowed to travel right now. So they are all on campus um, and they are looking to speak with you. So if you said to them, I'd like to talk to a professor, I guarantee you they will make that happen. And now you can Zoom with a professor from that university. Those are things that might not have happened before. They're all home and they're all virtual. That might be a really unique experience for you to be able to talk one-on-one -on -one with a professor or a student if that would help you make your decision. Um, so I think those opportunities are actually richer now. Um, and I would tell students to kind of look out, for, to try to look for those. But admissions reps are absolutely open to that. Yeah, um, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit. We've talked a little bit about kind of making the decision. Um, part of that decision is financial. Um, yep. Can you talk a little bit about the financial aid package um, and just kind of how to tell if a package is going to be the same for all four years, if it's a one year, how do you kind of evaluate that piece? Yep. Um, so I would say one of the, and I'm sure you get this all the time too, one of the biggest questions we get is, is this a good package? Like, is this good? Is this good? Like, is this, is this like, the, you know, they're like, just tell me, is this good or whatever? So, um, you know, what I always say to the students, number one, is they are giving you their best package first, right? Like they are trying to woo you and they know it's a competition. They know they're competing against other schools. So they are trying to give you their best package. So that being said, how do you know if it's going to be there going forward? Anywhere on your package that you see the word scholarship, and there's all different names, presidentials, governors, chargers, they call them all different kinds of things. Anywhere you see the word scholarship, know that there is a GPA requirement attached to that. So the only thing that will guarantee that you will see that money year to year is your hard work in school. And those GPAs can be very different. So we're talking as different as 2.7 to 3.5 very you know, different. Typically, if we see an honor scholarship, it will have one of the highest GPA requirements attached to it. So if you right off the bat see an honors, you definitely want to check what that GPA requirement is. For 
the average scho you know, G scholarship, you'll see a GPA typically of a 2.7 to a 3.0, 3.2, somewhere in there. So knowing that is important because here's the deal. One semester you go below that, you lose that money for the next four years. It doesn't come back when you get your GPA up. So that is much more student reliant to keep that money. Anywhere you see the word grant, it's the total opposite. It has nothing to do with the student's GPA and it has everything to do with the parent's finances. So that's where students and their parents are required to file a FAFSA every year. And they're gonna be checking your, your income. And as long as mom and dad's income stays fairly similar, they can get a little raised, you know, things like that. Um, then that grant money should continue to be there. But no, they hit the Powerball, you're gonna lose it. Um, but also know that if you didn't get any and something drastically changes, somebody's parent loses their job, you know, um, passes away, there's a divorce, something like that, then more money may come in the future. But grant is totally financially reliant and scholarship is completely on the student for their GPA. Um, so if those two things stay similar, you keep your GPA up and your family's finances stay similar, then yes, the guarantee is that that money should be there for all four years. Yep. Um, thank you very much so far for all this information. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so I am wondering, um, I wanna like kind of go a little bit more into that financial aid piece. And as we know, decision day is coming, uh, approaching. And so many students and parents have already received these letters and the information around the financial aid package they're being awarded. And what if um, situations have changed and parents need to kind of negotiate a different award since um, all that's happening right now. Is it allowed for students and families to engage with the college around that package? So I'll kind of take that in two parts. One, um, you know, yes, situations have changed and we know that, right? And so mm -hmm. do the colleges. Traditionally, and I, you know, I can't speak for all colleges, but traditionally the thought is if the change just happened today, the finances that we're looking at to put your package together are based on last year or two years ago. You did have that money then. Um, and if the change is short term or somebody's like, for example, if somebody's laid off, but still getting unemployment, you still have income coming into the home or we have people get laid off, not now so much, but prior, they would get severances. Well, severances may take you out so many months. So even though family-wise you're experiencing a change, it may not actually have the financial impact on the award that you think it would, okay? But the other piece of that is, can you negotiate? And there's people who wanna negotiate all the time, even if there isn't a, you know, pandemic, right? Like, hey, mm -hmm. I heard, yeah. I heard I can negotiate. How bad do you want me? Um, you know, I, I struggle with that for a couple of reasons. One, it implies that they didn't try to give you their best package. Um, kind of, and I hope there's no car dealers out there, but you know, that idea like, I'm gonna try to get them to take it off the lot with the, you know, best price I can. No, they actually want you to come and they know that they're competing against a ton of other institutions for you. So it isn't actually that they're trying to see, ha ha ha, how much can I get them to come for? They actually are giving you their best package. So uh, go into it knowing that and be appreciative for what has already been given. Um, I, 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 you know, caution sometimes the tone that parents will, will take. Um, and, you know, know that for the schools, in order to give you more money, typically you have to show that something changed, meaning I made this good decision based on the information that you gave me if there's something different now, maybe I can reassess my decision. Otherwise, what's going to make me move my decision? Um, and then if it has changed, they want proof. You know, they want to see, you know, that there's some documentation on did somebody get diagnosed with a, a medical issue or, you know, your family's experiencing something new that we need to document. Um, I also would say go in realistically that if, uh, if a school at any time moves even $2,500 a year, you understand that that's $10,000 over four years that they have just budged. That is a huge budge for them. And, uh, you know, being realistic, if you think you're going to, you have a $25,000 gap and you're just going to negotiate an extra 20, probably not realistic on your part what you think the schools can do. And ultimately, mm -hmm. I have seen some very prestigious schools say, well, then maybe we're not the right school for you. You know, if this isn't in your ballpark and in your wheelhouse, you sh then we're not the right school for you. So, you know, it, when people say, how much do they want us? There are schools who will say, I'm sorry, you know, then feel free to walk away. So you do have to understand if this is your child's first choice, are you willing to have that be said to you too? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, kind of along those same lines yeah. um, with everything that's happening right now and you know the unemployment rate is drastically increasing um, and people are just kind of stressed for money. Um, would there ever be a situation like, well, if a parent, like for example, if a parent loses their job and this is going to be for an extended period of time, will that impact that family's ability to borrow money because they don't have that income? Yeah, that's a great question. And I would say, honestly, that's probably the one that's probably keeping parents up the most at, at night. Like, mm -hmm. hey, literally four weeks ago, we had a complete plan on how we were going to pay for college and overnight my financial situation changed. And that's, that's very, as a parent, that's very stressful. So to give people some sleeping abilities at night, let me give you some good information. So number one, there are two different types of ways to finance college. There's the private loan route and the federal government plus loan, which is a parent loan for students, okay? Private loans, I'm not gonna lie, situation may be a little bit tougher now because it, they're usually credit score based, but they're also income based. And you have to have at least $30,000 of income um, at the time of applying, okay? And you do have to show recent pay stubs, which could put somebody who's currently furloughed or currently laid off in a, in a bind. Um, however, the Parent PLUS loan, which is a loan for the parents that is given by the federal government, has absolutely no financial uh, requirement whatsoever. So even prior to now, if you were unemployed, if you were on permanent disability, so fixed income, anything like that, you still qualify, okay? And it is not um, reliant on credit score as well because every parent gets the same rate. Now that being said, parents may be like, oh, that was the one, somebody told me not to take it, it's in my name, I didn't wanna go that route. What I always say is you do not marry any product for more than one year at a time. And that's really important. Yes, you're making a four-year plan because this is a four-year trajectory. However, the reality is you can choose a PLUS loan this year to get through crisis year. And if your situation bounces back, which hopefully, you know, I'm in that boat too, I hope it bounces back for my husband, um, that next year we qualify for a private student loan and the next three years we go that route and all of that debt's in our student's name and not ours. So know that it, there is this sort of emergency parachute that you can pull for this year if you need to, but you do not have to commit to that for the next four years. So that is also important to know. But yeah, the PLUS loan is exceedingly easy to get. Even if you are currently furloughed or um, laid off, you would still be able to qualify. Um, as long as you're not in bankruptcy, currently, currently being foreclosed on, or in default of your own government student loan. Okay. Excellent. Thank yep. you. Um, Angie, you've been talking a little bit about loans, um, but now that students are home, um, is there anything that they can do um, to apply for free money for college? For example, scholarships and grants. Yes, so yeah. I'll talk about what I know outside of district, and then maybe one of you can add if there's anything extra that you can tell them within the district, because every school I work with is different. So perfect. So yeah, I cannot stress this enough. The New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, I mean, I feel like I say it, you know, I scream it, I should wear it on my t-shirt. Um, New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, nhcf.org, still has their scholarship application open. The four-year scholarship program is due April 17th at 5 o'clock. And I'm going to tell you, they hold that pretty hard, okay? You do not get to turn it in at 5.01, all right? Um, and then they have what I love is um, an extended program that is for their career and technical two-year school kids. So if you're thinking like, hey, I might have to go that route year one because of the situation, those scholarships are open until June 15th. So you have plenty of time in the next two weeks to really get your scholarships done. And there is only one essay, and I'm going to hip you to what that question is. It is not hard. It is 500 words. Why do you want to study what you want to study or be what you want to be? That is not too hard, um, you know, to share uh, with them. So absolutely, real quick, they gave out over $6 million to New Hampshire seniors last year. So well worth your time and effort. Thank you. Um, and to speak to the local scholarships, Angie, um, we do have our local scholarships and we have extended our deadline. It actually happens oh, wow. to be the deadline for New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, which is Friday, April 17th. Um, the application, we have made it editable. It's in our Schoology page. So for those of you um, who haven't accessed it yet, please get it under our Schoology page. Um, once you have completed that 
form, then you would submit it as an email um, and reply it to Ms. Vicker. Um, cool. So if you have any questions beyond that, you can certainly reach out to, any, to your counselor and we can help you navigate that, but the deadline has been extended and they can find you. Great. Um, and then my final question, Angie, is um, once students have made their decision and paid their deposit, what happens next? Yeah, so that's, yeah, first they take a deep breath. Yay, <laughs> they've done it, right? That's awesome. Um, after that, um, it's kind of a weird time. So basically, um, parents go radio silent. So there's not a lot going on for parents, you know, during May and June early anyway. Um, during that time is when students need to be checking their email portal, because I'm sure every school has asked them um, to set up an email on that school's portal. Um, you want to be checking that regularly. I kind of tease that every human on the college campus is going to say congratulations and welcome, like the grounds people. Everybody's like, can't wait to see you play on our fields, right? Like everybody's saying hello and wooing you, but you want to check it because you're going to get things from registrar, from housing, from um, meal dining services, from financial aid they're going to be asking you to make a lot of decisions. And every time you do, you're gonna be so excited. They're like, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. So they're like, great, he wants a single, or they want a golden meal plan, or the, you know, whatever they want. And then at some point in June, and this is one of those that's slightly tweaked because of the pandemic, there's usually freshman orientation. I don't know what colleges are all doing yet. I'm sure some are gonna go virtual. I bet some are still going to have them, and I bet some are going to move them to August. Those are probably the three alternatives that may be coming up. But usually around that time, students are picking their classes. So again, they're putting your bill together because you get three labs, I don't have any, whatever, we're getting a bill. So then sometime towards the middle of June, you're going to walk across the stage. Parents are going to cry because you're so cute and they're so proud of you. Um, and then you're going to come home and you're going to open your portal and you're going to cry because the bill just got posted. So the super bill will post sometime around the end of June, beginning of July, right before 4th of July, typically. Um, and that's going to be the first time you've seen your real cost because up until now, it still feels like nailing jello to a wall, right? Like I, if I take this many courses, the estimate is this and what's the real price? Um, that'll be your real price for that college for next year. It's at that point that you or your parents will start to apply for the student loans. So if they wanna go the plus loan route or they wanna go a private student loan route, it's in that window of time when you know the real price and when it's actually due, which is usually July 15th or August 1st, you'll get all your loan paperwork together so that the promissory notes and the money can be committed to the school at that point. Um, so that's kind of what's gonna happen between now and then. And the very last thing is that you are gonna get told by your school that if you would like to take your $5,500 student loan, most of them have gotten the offer of a Stafford or a St um, direct federal loan, they're gonna be required to go on and do two things. They're gonna sign a promissory note, an MPN, and you're gonna do entrance counseling. That is required for you to do in order to commit the money to that particular college. Um, it's very easy. They're gonna give you directions. They're gonna tell you, go to this website and do it. Um, and all that does is commit the money and say that, yes, you know you, you are borrowing it and you have to pay it back. Um, and it allows that money to go over to that college. But you won't do that until like June or July. Yep. Thanks so much, Anzi, for um, answering all of our questions that we have. Um, I'm sure that students, after they watch this, that might uh, prompt some new questions for them that we may not yep. have, or something that's a little bit more unique to their situation. So certainly all of you out there, you can reach out to um, your, your school counselor with any of your questions. But Angie, um, a couple things. If you have any sort of parting message or parting words for students, and then if they have questions that they would like to direct to you, how can they contact you? Yeah, so um, you can um, give us a call at the Center for College Planning, and I'll get that number in a second, or one of you can. It's an 888 number that I forget off the top of my head, but I will get it in a sec. <laughs> Um, so you can call us at the Center for College Planning, um, and um, we are available Monday through Friday doing these type of appointments. So we've been starting to do um, Zoom appointments or um, just conference call type appointments, where we will go over the students' individual um, award letters with them. As a matter of fact, I have one this afternoon with the Oyster River family, where they gave me the award letters, and I'm going to go over it with them so I, we can personalize this information. 
um, and we have no problem doing that. The other thing is real quick, if you have any kiddos who are listening and are like, maybe I need to change and start at the community college, or I have a school that I'm now considering that I wasn't, that's not on my FAFSA, we can add schools to your FAFSA, we can go in and file your first time FAFSA for kids who are just sort of coming on board with the college thing for next year. Um, we can do any of that as well virtually. So we are still around um, and uh, yeah. So, and then our website has all of uh, this information as well. And then the last thing is we are getting out a resource page to um, educators and school counselors by the end of this week that will have webinars as well as a full video um, of all of the programming awesome. that we offer. Great. That sounds right. great, Angie. Awesome. And just so you all know that we'll be at, we will that any resource that we get as counselors, that especially the document we'll be adding to the Schoology page. Mm -hmm. I would, again, put in that plug to keep checking in because as we get more information, we'll be um, putting that into that Schoology page for you to access. Those of you who might want that phone number right now, now I feel like that. No, no, that's totally good. be scrolling good. At, the at the bottom know, of my it screen. It used to be words, it used to be words, know, and now we I changed know. it. <laughs> I know. So that number is 888-747-282. That's extension 119. And again, right. so, yeah. again. Is that 119 to get directly to? So that's what I was just going to say. So 119 gets to any of the counselors there. Um, it's the generic extension that any one of us answers. So anybody answering it is a college counselor. And um, after that, if you would like to speak to me directly, they can transfer you. Um, or you can just uh, email us at collegeplanning at, at uh, neef.org. I'm just going to read that number one more time because Ms. Sakara kind of cut out a little bit there. Oh, my goodness. Um, of course. One eight eight. <laughs> Seven four seven two three eight two, and that extension was one one nine to get a college counselor. Yep, great. Thank you, Angie. Thank you so Thank much. You very Thank much. you so Thanks much, Angie. Thanks for hosting this. I want Absolutely. to give a quick shout out to Oyster River because you were the only school in the entire state to offer this opportunity to us, wow. and now we're going to use you as a model. So awesome. go Oyster River. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Awesome. The trend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye guys. Bye. bye. Good luck.